CFS, I'm so glad that you guys are joining us again. Whether you're watching at one of our campuses, man, shout out to West Kendall, shout out to Redland, shout out to Corey Gables downtown, shout out to you, Doral, or even here at our Palmetto Bay campus, or if you're watching this online somewhere in the world at some time. Um, I'm so glad that you're here, and we're so glad. And we've been uh, in this series that it's been so, so powerful because we're talking about biblical relationships. Let me tell you, relationships are an amazing, amazing thing from God. And here in the church, we just wanted to put you on game on what the Bible says about relationships. And right now we're going to jump into it. So we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. And as you're turning there, if you don't know who I am, my name is Lewis. I get to serve as a Palmetto Bay student director here at CF Students. And man, y'all have fun at prom last week. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. It was lit. It was lit. Y'all were wilding. Y'all were wilding. I'm a perfect guy. <laughs> Let me stop. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. When you got to say, I got it. Come on, I need to hear y'all. Say, I got it. There you go. It says, do not be, everybody say unequally. Come on, say it like you with me. Say unequally yoked. Say it one last time, unequally. Now say yoked. There we go. It says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? Oof, that's good right there. I need you to highlight that, screenshot that, take a picture of it on the screen. That's good, okay? So right now we're going to pray. Before we do, man, today... It's going to be more like teaching, okay? So I really want you guys to just lean in, take notes, and let me tell you, we're going to lock in and it's going to be good, okay? So let's close our eyes. Let's bow our heads. I want every single person in the room, every single person watching online, watching at one of our campuses, I want you to close your eyes, bow your heads, and I want you to say, God, come on, with faith, with expectation in your heart, believing that God is going to speak to you, I want you to say, God, speak to me. I am here and I am listening. Speak to me. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen, amen, and amen. In this series, we've been talking about relationships, which, like I said, relationships is an amazing, phenomenal thing from God. And even where you guys are right now in your life, let me tell you, the woman that I'm married to today, my queen, my beauty, my everything, right, my wife, the one who I'm married to now, I met her at church and I met her probably when, when, at the age that you're in right now, when I was in high school, I met her. So we've been dating and we're dating and eventually we, had, we got married and it's amazing and it's awesome and et cetera and all that stuff. I say that to say that relationships, when they're done correctly, biblically, God's way, not your way, God's way, not the world's way, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. Let me tell you, it's the most beautiful thing Ever. And I love this because in 2 Corinthians, it starts off by, by talking about something that I want us to dive deep into today. Because I'm telling you, yes, I encourage you to, to be in a relationship with another believer. And that's what we're going to talk about today is dating unbelievers. See, right here in this scripture we just read, it says something so profound. It says, do not be unequally Yoked. And that's my first point today, starting off right off the bat, is do not be unequally yoked. And a lot of us are looking at that right now. We're like, what in the world does that mean, <laughs> right? What does do not unequally yoked mean? And what we're going to, uh, I, I want to paint this picture to you because what a yoke is, is it's a, a, a thing or a device or something they will put around the neck of a cattle, like a cow or something like that, um, and they will attach another cattle to them. So it's two cattle connected to each other so that they can be able to pull uh, people, supplies, food, and so they can be able to do that, and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I actually even have a picture for you, okay? It's going to be on the screen. That's a picture of what a yoke looks like. It's that device in the middle that is attached to two cattle, and they're pulling something. It can be people. It can be supplies. It can be food. It's primarily something heavy, okay? Something that, man, you need more than one cattle to do. So this device, yoked, and what the scripture is saying is do not be unequally yoked. And what, what that means is that you will not attach a cattle to a horse, right? Like one, the horse is way too fast, is way more faster. His body is built way differently. 
The strength can be off. One can be weaker than the other. But you won't see that. You won't see a cattle with a goat. It's way more smaller. It's way more weaker. It won't go the distance that this cattle can go. Like you won't put a cattle with a gorilla. I don't know. Like, like you, 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 that's what it looks like to be unequally yoked. It's the same animal attached to each other because they carry the same strength. They can carry out the same purpose, whatever their purpose is to do. They, they're built the same way. Like you won't put um, a, a cattle that's healthy with, with a horse that is un, like you won't do that. That's what it means to be unequally yoked. Two animals of different kind being attached to one another to carry out a purpose and to carry out a task. And to turn that over to our teaching, what 2 Corinthians is saying is, do not be unequally yoked. Do not come together, attach yourself in a relationship with someone that is not a believer. Meaning with someone who doesn't believe in Jesus. Someone that maybe believes in a different religion. Maybe someone that has different values. Like you cannot come together. You cannot relationally be in a dating relationship with someone, you as a Christian, you as a follower of Jesus, with someone who doesn't follow Jesus. You believe in God, they don't believe in God. You believe in the Bible, they don't believe in the Bible. You believe in prayer, they don't believe in praying at all. You believe in coming to church, they don't believe in coming to church. You believe Jesus is the only way to heaven, they believe that multiple other ways are our way to heaven. You believe that Christ was the son of God, they believe that God was just a prophet and just some ordinary man. Like you two, if you come together in a relationship, you are unequally yoked. And right here, scripture is so clear that it's saying do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. You want to pray? They don't want to pray. I'm telling you guys, I have seen relationships in student ministry of someone who is dating someone who doesn't really believe in Jesus, who just comes for them and who doesn't really believe in praying and doesn't believe in reading the word of God and doesn't really agree with a lot of the things we do. And I can tell you, I see it time after time, time after time. Relationship don't last. Relationship doesn't go nowhere. Whatever it was that God intended to be so, it just didn't happen to be so because they yoked themselves unequally. The next point that I want us to dive deep into, because this is very important, because the question raises, all right, Lewis, let me not be come together and be unequal with someone who's an unbeliever. So what is someone that I can come together with, right? Like who is someone you would consider, oh, this is a believer. This is, this is a, how do I know this? How do I know this? The second point I want you to write this down is by their fruits. And I promise you, we're going to unpack it. Some of you are like, fruits? You said, what? What you talking about? By their fruits. I want you to go to Matthew. This is good. This is so good. I want you to go to Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20. It says, beware. Everybody say, beware. It says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You would know them by their, everybody say, fruits. This is good. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Say that three times if you can, right? Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their, everybody say fruits, by their fruits, you will know them. I love this scripture because it's saying that there's people who will talk a lot of rah-rah, who will say a lot of things out of their mouth, but their actions say something else. You see, I want to paint this picture of what that term means by their fruits. If I, if I come up to you or if somebody in your life, they come up to you and they say, let me tell you, I go to the gym five days a week. I'm going in in the gym. My diet only consists of brown rice, black beans, chicken, water, no sugar at all. I work out five times a week. I fast every time the day that I'm going to work out and I'm going in. But every time you see them, 
they're gaining more weight, <laughs> right? Like, that just makes no sense whatsoever. And I'm painting that picture to tell you that maybe what a lot of times in our culture, we're believing what people say out of their mouth and you believe what you hear, but you need to really start believing what you see. And right here, what fruits mean is, what is the product of whatever it is you're saying? What is the result of what? If you're telling me you're going to the gym five days a week, you're fasting five days a week, your diet consists of this, no sugar at all, but you gain in weight? That does not make no, somebody here is a lie, okay? Somebody here lying, right? And I say that to say is that, we can see people who are followers of Jesus and you see them at church and you think, oh, they're cute. I mean, they're here at church, right? Like, oh, okay, she bad, he cute, whatever. He's here at church. I mean, that's someone I can come together with. But you truly got to examine it. And this is why that talking stage, as we call it, you know, when somebody's talking, talking, is so important because this is a time where you can not just listen to what they say, but watch how they are. And right there, you can start to examine their fruits. You can start to see, okay, you are saying you're a follower of Jesus, but every time I see you at school, you cussing somebody out. Like, like you, I always see you at church, right? But you're always carrying hatred and bitterness around and you have no forgiveness for nobody, right? Like, Oh, okay, okay, you, you say you believe in Jesus, but I only see you at church once every three months. Like, you say you believe in God, but your Instagram or your Snapchat says something completely different. That's what it means to, that, that you will know someone by their fruits, not by what you're hearing that they're saying, but how, what, what do you see in their life? I don't know if you guys believe this, but let me tell you, Actions speak louder than words. And right here in your life, a lot of times we can jump the gun because we think somebody cute, we think they bad, we think they whatever. And you get into a relationship with them just to find out that every time you ask them, hey, you going to church? No. You want to do this devotional together? No but you want me to send you some I shouldn't be sending on Snapchat? The, the fruits, the actions are speaking louder. Oh, oh, you, you, don't wanna, you, you don't wanna pray for me, you don't wanna encourage me. You cannot even tell me a passage of scripture, but you know every song by NBA Youngboy and J. Cole? Your, your, your fruits are speaking louder. Your fruits are speaking louder. Your actions are speaking louder than your words. It's that you find somebody that you say, oh, they're a sheep. And you date them just to find out, as the scripture just said, they're a ravenous wolf. CF students, you need to understand this. I know they're cute. And I know her smile is wow. And I know he go to the gym and his body look built, right? But you really need to start examining something deeper than that. Especially if you want to potentially be in a relationship with them. You need to slow down, fam. You need to relax and not jump the gun. You need to be praying, God, is this, is this a, a person I can come together with? Let me, let me, look, at, let me look at their life, right? And even uh, Pastor Gabe, he's gonna throw it down and um, one of his messages, I'll give you a little sneak peek, all that good stuff, right? Is that being the one is better than becoming the one. Like, I know right now we're talking about a whole bunch of other people, but what about your fruits? Like, you, you, you want a relationship, you want this, that, and the third, but what about you? Right? And we, we look at this scripture and we say, man, don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever, someone who doesn't believe in Jesus. And even people who say, yes, I believe in Jesus, but their life says com something completely different. Right? I mean, scripture says it so clearly. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, Jesus said. Got to look at people and, and examine and say, wow, are they truly living whatever it is they preach in? Right? We got to come to this place to understand, okay, that sucks. Right? 
I have to date someone who is in the same uh, values in me, who believes the same things in me, who believes in the same God in me, as me. And like, why would I do that? When the unbeliever, they might be more attractive, they might be more funnier, they might be more fun to be with or whatever the case you want to say. And you might be thinking these things. Why should we do this? Why is this important? My last point is simply this, to be honest. My last point is because God said so. You see, a lot of times we forget that this scripture, this word of God, the living word of God, it's not meant for it to be molded to my life. No, it's meant for my life to be molded to it. And everything in this word of God, I ought to live to obey it. How to live to obey the word of God. Let me tell you, there's things in scripture that my flesh, my flesh don't want to do. You think I want to forgive somebody after they have done so much wrong to me? You think I want to do that? I don't think anybody wants to do that, right? But man, this word of God says we ought to do so. And for me, I love God and I want to obey him in all the ways I can. And, and why is that? I want you to turn to this. This is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. I want you to turn to this. It says in Isaiah uh, 55, 8 through 9, it says this. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. So the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Reason why I say because God said so. That sounds so like God said so. We got to listen to him anyways. No, the reason why is because God knows way more than we do. And God wants what's best for you. And God doesn't just want to give you what you desire. No, he gives you what you need. And for me, a mere human being can look at my life and I can always think and be prideful and think, I know what's best for my life. I know what I need in my life. This is what I want for my life. Why can't God give me this? Why can't God do that? Why I has to be like this? Why do I got to listen to that? Why do I have to do this? And we got to understand that the scripture, Isaiah 55, it just said it so clearly that God's thoughts are greater than our thoughts. His ways are greater than our ways. We got to understand that God cares and loves so much for every single one of us, for his children, for me and for you, that he does things in our life that sometimes we don't agree with, that sometimes we don't like, sometimes we're uncomfortable with, and sometimes that really, really hurts. And we don't understand it and we don't get it. But can I tell you that that's God as a loving father, that he wants what's best for your life. Jeremiah 29 11, this is a scripture that we all know for God's plans are to prosper you. It's not to hurt you. It's not to damage you. No, but it's for a life of, of prosperity and success. Like God's ways are better than my ways. God's plan is better than your plan. God's thoughts are greater and higher than your thoughts. And you got to come to a place where you got to say, OK, even if I don't agree with this, even if I think I have a better way, God, I trust you. God, I trust you. You are God. I'm not I'm not God. God sees further down the line than we do. God sees everything in my heart, in the other person's heart. Like you don't understand who that person is. Just because you think they're cute, you think that's the one? No. No, we have to understand that when God is saying something like, do not be unequally yoked, it's for your good. It's for your good. It's not to harm you. It's not because he's a party pooper and he doesn't want you to have a life of this and that. No, 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 no. It's because he wants what's best for you. And for me, I can tell you, in my life, dating my girlfriend at the time, before she was my wife, I would not be here today if it wasn't for her. Just keeping it a stack with you guys. There's times in my life, in my faith, in my journey where I've wanted to give up, where I've wanted to stray away. And there's times where my amazing girlfriend at the time, she would call me and be like, Louis, you are called by God. Louis, I want to pray for you. Call me right now. I'm going to pray for you. You're not feeling well? Well, I'm going to pray for you. you we we got to go deeper in our relationship with God. One of my favorite quotes that I've been hearing lately, that it takes two to get into a relationship. It takes three to stay in one. You, the other person, and God. And for you, I can testify that I'm in a 
amazing marriage. Man, I'm probably having more fun than y'all are. I'm not even lying to you. B because I'm, I'm married to a believer, I'm yoked to someone I'm equal to. And maybe you're watching this right now, and I want to end here. And we've been talking a lot about other people today, <laughs> right? That person, this person, what if this, whatever. But right now, I want to take a moment, I want to talk about you. Because maybe you're in this room right now, maybe you're the unequal, right? Maybe you're the unbeliever in the room. Can I tell you that right now, the last thing you should be worried about is a relationship, a boyfriend or a girlfriend. It's the last thing you should worry about. But the thing that I want to bring unto you today is a relationship that if this relationship isn't flourishing, no other relationship in your life ever will. And I'm not just talking about boyfriend and girlfriend. I'm talking about with friends. I'm talking about with coworkers. I'm talking about with teammates. I'm talking about with your mom, with your dad, with your brother and your sister. Any relationship in your life will not flourish if you don't focus on this one, your relationship with Jesus. And here today, I love this. One of my favorite scriptures of all time, Romans chapter 10, love it. It says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And let me tell you, this religion you want to call, it's not what it's about. It's about a relationship. God wants a relationship with you. God is not a dictator in the sky that is just uh, telling you what to do. No, he is a man, a God in the flesh who became man to be whipped, to be beaten, to die on a cross that me and you deserve, to die a death that me and you deserve. The Bible says that the wages of sin, every single person in this room, including you, including me, were full of sin. We're sinners. But Jesus died a death that we deserve. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. He died on the cross, but on the third day he raised so that we may have eternal life for all those who believe in him. And today I want to tell you, I know you think that person is cute. I know you think that girl is bad, whatever the case is. But that's the last thing you need to worry about right now. What you need to worry about right now in this moment as you're listening to my voice, stop thinking about everything else. This is the most important decision of your life is do you have a relationship with Jesus? Because even if you do get a boyfriend or a girlfriend, you're going to come to a place in your life that we're all going to get to one day and you're going to be in front of a holy and righteous God. And what mattered the most was not the relationship that you had with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, but the relationship that you had with the one who created you, Jesus. Right now, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says that if you just confess with your mouth that he is Lord and that you believe in your heart that he raised from the dead, you will be safe. And not just will you gain salvation in eternity, but now you start a relationship with the one who created you. And I promise you, that when that relationship with God is prioritized in your life, every other relationship will flourish. Let's pray. I want you to close your eyes, bow your heads. And if you're in this room right now, if you're in one of our campuses right now, even if you're watching this online, I want to submit to you with every eye closed, every head bow, that this is the relationship, the relationship with Jesus that you need to focus on. If that's you here tonight and you're saying, Lewis, you're right. Focused on the wrong things. I'm looking at the wrong things. I love how Pastor Gabe mentions it, that it's better to become the one than look for the one. Maybe you're here in this room or at one of our campuses. You're the unequal. You're the unbeliever that we ought to not be yoked to. And right now, I want to submit to you not so you can get into a relationship with somebody. Do not do this for nobody else. This is for you and your life. Every eye closed, every head bowed. If you're in this room and you're saying, Louis, I want to start a relationship with Jesus. I want to start a relationship with the God who created me. With every eye closed, every head bowed, I'm going to count to three. Nobody's looking at you. I just want you to raise your hand. I just want to pray for you. Nobody's looking at you, not even me. One, God loves you. 
He loves you so much right where you are. Come to him today, right now, just as you are, as messed up as you are, all that. Come to him as you are right now. Two, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son for me and for you. God didn't come for the righteous, for the perfect. No, he came for those who are sick, those who are sinners, and those who are in need of a savior. And he's here right now, and he wants to start a relationship with you three. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand. God bless y'all who are raising your hand. Would you put your hand down? Every eye closed, every head bowed. I want everybody, CFS, we're a family here. But as scripture just said, we're going to confess with our mouth. I want everybody to say, God, come on, don't leave them people hanging that, that raise their hand. Come on, we're a family here. Everybody say, God, I make the decision to believe in you. I believe that I am a sinner, but that you died on the cross and you rose from the grave for my sins and to give me eternal life. God, today, I want to start. Come on, with faith and expectation, everybody say, God, I want to start my relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said Amen and amen and amen. Come on, can we give it up for those who made that decision here today? Man, I'm so grateful for you. And like I said, man, when you prioritize this relationship in your life, every other relationship will flourish. And if you're like, man, I need to know a little bit more to know what it's like to follow Jesus, start a relationship with him. What does that look like? Like, man, go up to one of the student directors right now. Go up to your leader and say, hey, I gave my life to Jesus. Okay, we want to celebrate you, we want to hug you, we want to love on you, but we also want to walk this journey with you in your relationship with God. So CFS, I love you guys so much. I pray that you guys were blessed by this message, and I hope that it impacts you in your life and in your journey where you are right now. So love you guys, CFS. See you guys next week.